Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, part 31. Making gaskets for the intermediate and high pressure cylinder covers, plus fitting some more crankshaft oilers. In the previous episode, I fitted the cylinder cover for the low pressure cylinder complete with a new gasket. Now it's time to make two more gaskets for the other two cylinder covers. To do this job, I need something out of this box. It's a good quality box of drawing instruments, pretty much like the ones I could never afford when I was at school. But times have changed and I bought this a while back from a junk shop for £3. In the previous video, I showed the ink pad method, which works okay, it just covered my hands in ink. Making gaskets using this method is a bit more scientific. The board of the intermediate cylinder is one and a quarter inches, and here I'm setting the compass points five eighths of an inch apart. And as if by magic, a circle appears on the gasket material, which is one and a quarter inches in diameter. I work in Imperial, it's the way I was taught at school, and also the drawings for most steam engines use Imperial measurements. In this clip, I'm using my old pair of scissors to cut out the hole, but as you can see, I'm going well inside the line. This is to allow the scissors to have some room to move when I cut on the proper line. I could use a smaller pair of scissors, but these are the only ones that I really have that are good. They are very old and very good indeed. They were made in Sheffield by a company called William Whiteley and Sons, and the company is still in business making scissors today. The web address is on screen for William Whiteley and Sons, who make proper scissors that will last a lifetime or two. I've purposely cut on the inside of the line because then I will trim to the line using the bench mounted Proxon motor tool fitted with the flapper wheel. All I have to do now is just trim the part to the pencil line. At 80 grit this is a coarse flapper wheel and it removes the material very quickly. A test fit shows that it's still slightly tight, but with just a touch on the flapper wheel it's now a perfect fit on the register of the cylinder cover. As before, I'm using two pieces of wood for support while I drill the holes through the gasket material. And now viewers, it's top tip time. To finish off the gasket and remove any rough edges, I'm using a piece of Scotch-Brite, first on one side of the gasket and then the other. Doing this removes any surplus material and you end up with a perfect gasket. The final job is to cut out the gasket from the sheet. You will notice that I'm cutting on the outside of the line because once the gasket is fitted, it's very easy to trim off any surplus. As you can see from this clip, the gasket material is a little bit on the large side, but I'm not going to do anything about this until I've bolted the cylinder cover in place. In exactly the same way as I fastened the low pressure cylinder cover to the cylinder, I'm fastening the intermediate cylinder cover using some 7BA nuts, and then by using a combination of a sharp Stanley knife blade, followed by a rub with a piece of Scotch-Brite, the fit of the gasket is quite good. I need to make a stud for this cylinder cover. I'm making this stud in a different way to the others. First of all, I screw a nut onto a long bolt. Then I screw the bolt part of the way into the cylinder, but only as far as the thread of the drain tap. And to make sure that the thread doesn't go in too far, I've actually screwed in one of the drain taps. And when I feel that the bolt is just touching the thread of the drain tap, I back it off slightly and then using a pair of side cutters, I chop off the end of the bolt. Now it's time to fit the stud into the cylinder and for this I'm using Loctite 603, which is a retaining compound. This is easily identified by the fact that it is green. And please note, I'm using this to lock the nut onto the stud. After I applied the Loctite 603, I gave it a while to cure and I cleaned and polished the visible end of the stud. Now the nut is firmly locked to the stud with the Loctite 603, I'm applying some Loctite 542. This is a thread sealant, not a retainer. Please note, Loctite 542 is red, not green. Once I tightened up the nut, which is really now a bolt, you wouldn't really know which one was which. That concludes the fitting of the intermediate cylinder's cover. The high pressure cylinder is very small, only three quarters of an inch in diameter. And here, I'm setting the compass to half of that, which is three-eighths of an inch. The notches in the steel rule make it really easy to set this compass. An old drawing set like this is a really useful thing to have in the workshop. Here, I'm dusting it off before I put it away again. I'll speed up this part of the operation because it's absolutely identical to the one previously shown. 
I need to fit a smaller diameter flapper wheel for obvious reasons. And once again, I use the flapper wheel to clean up the inside edge of this hole until it's exactly the same size as the register on the high pressure cylinder cover. After drilling the holes, I finish it off using some Scotch-Brite. I didn't draw around this cylinder cover. You can do it like this on all of them. I just held the gasket in place and cut around the edge using a pair of scissors. As before, my trusty set of rusty but good whitely scissors, made in Sheffield. The gasket on this cylinder cover won't need much trimming because I've cut it very close to the metal. All I have to do using my nut spinner is tighten the 7BA bolts to hold it in place. I fitted the lubricators to this engine a while back, but I'm not happy with them. I have a better idea. First of all, I'm going to remove all of these and I'm going to replace them with an oil cup fitted at the top of each of them. These are drip feed oilers from a company called 21st Century Steam, but the drip feed mechanism is a bit large and ugly and a bit too small to be practical. I'm screwing a standard oil cup into the top of the glass oiler. I do this by fitting the small brass oiler into the chuck, so that the lip of it fits into the first set of grooves on the inside edge of the jaws. By doing this, the oil cup is well supported in the chuck jaws, and I can screw the glass oiler onto the brass oiler using a piece of Scotch-Brite to allow me to grip it. Before fitting the new oilers to the engine, I'm just giving it a bit of a clean-up. Here's something you mustn't do. I'm using a pair of pliers to tighten the glass oiler into the hole on the bearing. And as you can see, the glass oiler quickly falls off the bottom bit. The way to do this job is to use a very small pair of pliers, or preferably a small pair of surgical forceps, but work on the bottom part only. In certain applications, these oil cups can look quite good with the extension on the top, but it's largely dependent on the size and scale of the engine. On a small engine, they can look too big. With the four oilers firmly screwed into the bearing plates, I applied some oil, as can be seen here. Then I took a photograph of the engine using my Sony AX53 video camera. I thought this would be an ideal opportunity to test my Canon 6D DSLR camera. I haven't mastered how to use this yet, and I've got a problem with the focusing. I think I'm using the wrong type of focus. I'm fairly quick at picking things up, so the photographs of engines using the DSLR camera will get better. I certainly hope so anyway. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.